Hi guys, welcome back to Dimitra's Dishes. So today I'm going to be bringing to you a classic Greek dish, pastizio. I'm sure you've heard of it. If you haven't, it's like the Greek version of lasagna. There's layers of pasta and meat sauce and there's a beautiful bechamel sauce on top. Now I'm going to take you over the ingredients and then we're going to get started. But before we go over the ingredients, let me let you know that it is fall and this is a great dish to have on hand when you're entertaining. The thing that I love about it most, after the fact that it's so delicious, kids love it, but it serves a big group of people. You can get at least 12 servings out of this if you're serving it as a main dish. So make sure you get the recipe on DimitrosDishes.com. But before that, let's get started and go over the ingredients. So I have my meat sauce over here that I'm gonna, there's a link down below on how I made it. It's really easy. It's gonna be my basic meat sauce. It's right here. For the bechamel, we're gonna need some Parmesan cheese that I've grated. Um, traditionally, we put kefalotiri in it, but kefalotiri is a little bit hard to find, so Parmesan cheese is great. We need some flour, some eggs. I have two whole eggs and two egg yolks. We're gonna need some whole milk, a little bit of olive oil. Then for garnishing the pasta, we're gonna need some dried oregano. And uh, we need some nutmeg, salt, pepper. And then for the pasta, now I'm gonna go over the pasta and just talk about it just a little bit because um, the pastizio patrol might <laughs> get me if I don't talk about this. Now, back in the day when I started making pastizio, traditionally it's made with the long noodles that are, you can only find in specialty food stores where they sell European and Mediterranean products. Now that was hard to find, so I started making it with this ziti, which you can find in every supermarket. So if you can find the long noodles and you want to go very traditional, be my guest, go ahead, get it, that's fine. But if not, trust me, I've been making this for years and it works beautifully. I've boiled my pasta and you want to boil it just a little bit, maximum, maximum about six, seven minutes because it's going to continue to cook in the sauce in the oven so you don't want to have mushy pasta. I just boiled it and then afterwards I just sprinkled some olive oil on it and now I'm going to season it. I'm going to season it with some more oregano, dried oregano. You can do parsley if you're not a big oregano fan. And then we're going to put a little bit of this Parmesan shredded cheese on here. Always get the real stuff. Never get the stuff that's sold in the um, unrefrigerated section. And then I'm just going to add my meat sauce to it. And another crazy thing that I do that you're yeah, yeah, or other people don't do, I like to mix it all up. I don't like to do the layers. That's just how I do it. It works. It makes it really juicy, really flavorful all the way through. And if you really want to layer it and put a layer of pasta and the meat sauce on top, be my guest. Go ahead and do that. But give it a try one time. And trust me, it's going to be delicious. So we're just going to mix this all up. And then we're going to make our bechamel sauce. Just like that. And then I'm just going to top it with a little bit more shredded Parmesan cheese on top. And now for the bechamel sauce. I'm going to put this on the side and then we're going to get started. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the bechamel sauce. And bechamel, all it really is is a savory custard. And it's really good. It's delicious. So now we're going to start by putting our flour in here and uh, some olive oil. Now some people use butter, we use olive oil. Olive oil is abundant in Greece, but if you really want to use butter, go ahead. It's really equal amounts of flour and olive oil. And you start by cooking the flour with the olive oil so it gets kind of like a toasty, nice nutty flavor. And it just takes a few minutes. Okay, once it's nice and toasty, we're going to slowly begin to add our milk to it. I'm using whole milk and that's best for this recipe. I didn't warm it up, but if you do warm it up, then it's going to go much faster and this, this sauce will be ready in just like five minutes. Otherwise, it takes a little bit longer. And it's important that you add the milk a little bit at a time so you don't get any like clumps of flour and it's nice and smooth. I can smell it. Once you smell it, you know it's ready for the milk. And I'm going to add a little bit at a time. And smooth it out and keep doing that until the milk is all inco incorporated. And while this is coming up to a boil, we're going to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. 
Go easy on the salt because it's going to get Parmesan cheese and that's salty. So you don't want to have it be overpoweringly salty. A little bit of salt and some nutmeg. I just like a little pinch of nutmeg. I don't want it to be too overpowering. So about a quarter teaspoon or so. And as soon as it begins to thicken, we're going to turn it off the heat. And that's it. It's right here it is. Once it begins to come to a boil, then you know it's going to start feeling thicker. You're going to feel the whisk heavier. And then it is ready. And it's going to continue to cook in the oven, so you don't want to overcook this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to temper these eggs. And tempering just means we're going to raise the temperature so that way when we add them to our hot milk, they're warm and they don't scramble. You don't want to scramble eggs in your bechamel sauce. You want it to be nice and smooth and creamy because it's a savory custard, right? So we're just going to add some bechamel sauce to this. And I've turned the heat off. Mix it all in. And then finally, about a cup of shredded cheese, or a little more. Add a little bit more black pepper. And that's it. Just like that, the bechamel sauce is done. Now we're going to put it all together. My oven is preheated to 375 degrees. Now I have a funny oval shaped pan, but you can use any lasagna size pan that you have at home. That's going to work just great. But what I like to do is put a half sheet pan underneath my baking pans just because it makes it so much easier and safer to pull it in and out of the oven. That's the reason I put my sheet pan underneath here. And now we're just going to pour this luxurious and delicious sauce over our pasta. Beautiful. When I was little, before my mom added the cheese to this, she would make extra sauce and give me a bowl sprinkled with uh, a little bit of sugar and cinnamon on top. I love puddings and custards and all those kinds of things, and I love that, so that was like a little treat for me. She did that every time she made a pastizia or moussaka. So, just like that, it's ready to go in the oven. That simple. It's, we're going to pop it in the oven and cook it for about 45 minutes or until like the sauce begins to become golden on top, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, so the pastizia is completely ready. It took 45 minutes to, to bake. And then you want to make sure you leave it before you cut it for at least 20 minutes. And um, it's, it's completely ready. And I literally can't wait to dig into this. I can't wait to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to cut it down the middle. The first piece is always for the chef or the cook. So that's me. I'm going to cut this corner piece over here. You see how nice and golden it's become all around. And the cream is still nice and creamy. It's not overcooked. Let's get this out. Now the longer it sits, the easier it is to take out like really neat slices. Look at that. that. Beautiful. The pasta is completely cooked. Now, my mom either made this or moussaka. Anytime she had guests over, it was like a must have in the house along with any other dish that she had because the kids loved it and who wouldn't love it? Look at it, it has a layer of beautiful bechamel sauce. I like the way the meat and the pasta are combined together. If you, again, if you want to layer it and create a layer of pasta and layer of meat, be my guest. Whatever floats your boat, just do that. But make this, it's so delicious. It's just fantastic. This sauce is perfect. Let me get a bite of the cream. Mm. Perfection. This I'm so excited to bring this dish to you guys. Stay tuned because I have a moussaka coming up in the coming episode, so you're going to definitely want to make that as well. 
Get the recipe, www.demetrasdishes.com. You're going to find all the exact measurements on there. Let me know, what do you want to learn how to do next? Do you want to learn how to make like a turkey for Thanksgiving? Do you want to Cornish hens? Cornish hens are lovely. Whatever it is, post in the comments down below. Thumbs up this video, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe because we have lots of delicious recipes coming soon and you definitely don't want to miss them. Say hello to me in the comments down below. Let me know what you want to learn next and I will see you all next time. Bye everyone.